Good morning, and I, if you allow me, I'm going to talk to you from over here. One of the things that we um, are asked to do during this time of observing a safe worship environment is to not share microphones. So um, I'll be talking from over here, so I'll wave to whoever dares. Um, a few announcements this morning. First off, this is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. And it's so wonderful to see your faces in this place this morning. We have missed seeing you. And um, I know there are many that are not with us today, but they are with us. And um, it's wonderful to have you in this place. Several announcements. Um, part of that having to do with some of the changes that we're having to make during this time that kind of take us into the summer. One of those is that we will not be taking a physical offering, meaning we will not be passing an offering plate. But in the back where you see Ron along the edge of our soundboard is a collection box for your offering. There's an envelope there should you need it. When you come in to the service in the mornings or as you leave, if you'll drop it there, it'll be in a secure place and we'll make sure that it gets over to the church office. Also, if you are using an assisted hearing device, hopefully you found it laid out for you in the foyer. At the end of the service, if you would just leave it right where you are, we're just going to leave it in the pew, and it will stay safe there and be just there for you next, um, next year, next week. Hopefully not next year. Hopefully we'll see you next week. But it will be there for you next week. So you don't need to worry about returning it. Just leave it right where you're seated, and we'll make sure that um, it gets taken care of. We are going to continue to have online videos of our worship service to provide for those who are at home. And even though it won't be in a live format, we do want to make sure that we have that for them. We've had so many um, encouraging responses about those who really enjoyed and were so grateful for that opportunity. So we will continue to do that. Um, if you'd like to share the word and make sure everybody knows that we'll be sending out a link through an email for right now, um, but you're looking for that email that will be coming from the church about that. We also want to make sure over the course of these last couple of months when we've been home, our big concern and what we've been really following up, following up with is making sure everyone's receiving the information. The majority of our information on a weekly basis is contained in the church newsletter. I know some, most people picked it up here at church. Some receive it through email. Some were having it mailed to them. If you know of someone who is not receiving that information, if you would please let Vanessa know in the church office. It's very important. We really want everyone to know what has been happening with the church council and during this time. So we want to make sure everybody's informed of what's going on. You, one thing you could even do if on the bulletin, the tear-off side that actually is we have for visitors or for prayer requests, if you know of someone, if you would write their name on that, put it in with the offering, we'll make sure that that gets taken care of and that they get the information. Next Sunday, we are very pleased, the church council, to have Bob Dean be joining us in our worship service. He will be preaching from the pulpit. As we've mentioned in our newsletters, Bob Dean is the executive director of the Dallas Baptist Association and is a part of the church next steps process, which is something that we've also mentioned in the newsletters. He will be here for you to be able to meet him and to see him to share with us next Sunday, the 14th. And then the following Wednesday, Wednesday evening, June the 17th at 6.45 p.m. here in the sanctuary, he will be presenting and answering any questions you may have about the church next steps process. So we would like to make sure you are aware of that special called church conference. We had that in the newsletter, and we will continue to remind people this week, next Sunday, so that on Wednesday evening, June 17th, 6.45 p.m., we will have him here to discuss and to answer any questions that you may have. I think that's the announcements. That's a lot. I know it's no fun to listen to me talk. So we are not able to do our welcome in the normal way, but what I would like to encourage you to do right now is as you're standing, getting ready to join us for our first hymn, that you wave to somebody across the sanctuary. But we are going to stand, sing as you feel comfortable, sing as you feel comfortable. John and Madison are going to lead up here, but this is about our 
joining in worship together. So as we stand for Come Thou Fount, give a wave to somebody across the sanctuary, and that will be our welcome this morning. Good morning. I'm going to be sharing a scripture from Ephesians chapter 3, starting in verse 16 through 4 6. I pray that out of the glorious riches he may strengthen you with power through his spirit in your inner being, so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. And I pray that you, being rooted and established in love, may have power together with all the Lord's holy people, to grasp how wide and long and high and deep is the love of Christ, and to know that this love surpasses knowledge, that you may be filled to the measure in all the fullness of God. Now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than we ask or imagine, according to his power that is at work within us, to him be glory in the church, and in Jesus Christ throughout all generations, forever and ever. Amen. As a prisoner for the Lord, then, I urge you to live a life worthy of the calling you've received. Be completely humble and gentle. Be patient, bearing with one another in love. Make every effort to keep the unity of the Spirit through the bond of peace. There is one body and one Spirit. Just as you were called to one hope when you were called, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, and God the Father of all, who is over all and through all and in all. You may be seated. We sing together, bless the Lord, O my soul. Bless the Lord.
Well, um, as most of y'all who may have noticed looking through the bulletin, we're actually going to have two uh, moments of prayer today. Um, this particular moment, this particular time, um, we felt as a church, as a congregation, that it would be a appropriate to have a time of uh, thankfulness for the life well lived of Sam Underwood. One of the things that I've been mulling over through these times alone um, is just how meaningful he was to me and getting to hear some of y'all's stories of how meaningful he was to you. Um, and I wanted to give us an opportunity to pray about that and thank God for a life well lived. So if you take a few minutes and pray with me. So let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you so much for the Underwoods, uh, for their service to this church. I thank you so much for sharing, letting them be able to share this godly man in our lives, this servant-minded heart, the leader of uh, our congregation for so many years. Um, I thank you for just all the time that we had together with him. I pray that we remember those over the years and we're comforted in knowing where he is right now. And I just continue to pray for this church and I pray that you be with us as we move forward. But again, I thank you so much for giving us an opportunity to live life with the Underwoods. And I thank you for all that you've done for us. And we say this in your name.
Allow me to bring this to your attention, these folks that we want to pray about this morning. In the hospital, we have Aletha Baker, Monetta Owen, Helen Joyner. Let's pray for them. Let's begin continuing always to pray for David and Carol Rainey, Sharon Kozart, I believe, has spent some time in the hospital as well. Let's pray for uh, Betty Tove and always and always pray for them and their family. And pray for all of us as this time, as we go through this transitional time. The world is in a crazy place. I seem crazy on my job. We see it on the news. But we're here. We're here to worship it. And we know who's in control. God is in control. So allow us to pray. Dear Lord, we thank you for this moment. We thank you for the gathering of your people. We thank you that we can look to you for calmness, for spirit. For we know you're in control. We pray for the upcoming months. As we search to do your will in this location, in this church, and reach out to this community. Bless all our efforts as we do this. Guide us and direct us. We pray for those who are in the hospital. Give them healing. Give the doctors guidance. Let our first responders and the essential employees do every day. We pray for those of our specific members. We pray for these families that are grieving, Lord. Be with them always. Know that your presence is there. Give them comfort. Give them healing. Again, let them know you are in control. You are the one that can control this world. And that gives us peace and comfort. Again, bless this time together. At the end of the service, let us know that it is good to be in the house of the Lord. And again, bring us back again to worship you and study your word. It's in your name we pray. Amen. <laughs>
One more quick announcement I would like to make before we get started. Um, this Saturday will be Sam's memorial service. Um, so we encourage any of you who can make it to be here. Um, but if you cannot, for, for whatever reason, um, just to let you know, we will be recording it and we will be uploading it so you may watch it um, at your own time. Um, and we are thankful, and I'm sure the Underwoods will be thankful just to let you know that they're in your prayers. Um, today, I have been here at this church getting close to 10 years. I will be here 10 years in August, and I can say without a doubt, today is the most excited day that I, for me to come back to this church. I feel like we need it. I feel like our world needs it. Um, it's been an interesting journey. Um, and when I started to write this message uh, today, it was one of those things I even looked at Chelsea and I was like, I can't write a normal sermon like I normally do. It doesn't make sense to me right now. And actually, if you look at your uh, scripture for today, it's only one verse, which if you know me, that's not normal. <laughs> I'll use some other scripture, I promise. But we're going to be in 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 12, verse 27. You are the body of Christ, and each one of you is a part of it. It's an interesting verse. It's an interesting thought. I get it. Right before this, Paul is speaking to the church and he's illustrating to the church that we are all one unit. We are all one people gathered together. And he actually makes the illustration, and some of y'all kind of are already kind of making this connection, that some of us are hands, some of us are legs, some of us are different parts of the body. And like the body, we function and do different things, but we all work together for the common good. And again, I think it's a wonderful illustration that's still very applicable to us today. And I, I, when I think of this particular passage, it's always one of those things with a positive connotation where, you know what, I'm going to let my hand do something good and I'm going to be able to celebrate it. Why? Because it's part of the church. They're a part of the church, and we can celebrate together. Um, I'm going to take it for a little bit of a different spin. Um, I think, realistically, this... I'm going to just say it. I'm just going to say it. My youth, I tell my youth all the time. Uh, maybe I'm a little too honest with them, um, but I, I tend to let you know right up front. When I wrote this sermon, a lot of ways it's more for, my, for me. It's therapy for me at this point, kind of just gathering what's going on in my life and what's, what I've been, you know, dealing with. And I feel like it was one of those messages, I was like, man, this is, this is something that I need to let off. And I feel like this is something that we as a church probably can all relate to. And so that's where I'm kind of going with this. So I'm actually going to start off with the idea of, instead of making this a positive moment, I also want to take into consideration... The other side of it. So those of you uh, who have been in contact with me pretty recently will know um, that about February, 
Sometimes when things happen in other parts of the body, the other parts of the body will react and they hurt. You know, so what essentially has happened, and most of y'all who know, remember I, about five or six years ago, I had a herniated disc in my back. So we think that this is where this is all spawning from. About five or six years ago, uh, with that hurt disc, I started walking maybe a little differently, and my body started adjusting. And over that time, I guess my body broke. <laughs> and now my knees are, are kind of letting me know something is not right, something is not okay here. We need to fix it. We need to work on this. And I've been dealing with that, and I still, like, I have braces on both my knees. They're incredibly uncomfortable. Most of y'all, you know, some of y'all know the idea of going through therapy and stuff like that. It's just not fun. But I've been able to take this moment, and this is what I do as a pastor. I kind of try and relate things back to my original life and kind of see where we're at. And so I really started reflecting over this, this thought process of this journey of my struggle with my physical body, and I started turning it to my spiritual body. The fact of the matter is, sometimes when the body is broken, the rest of the body hurts. It lets you know everything's not all right. Now, I think that actually can be such a warming moment because again, it's a time where we laugh together, we cry together. When you hurt, I hurt. Sometimes it just takes a doctor to remind us it's not always about you. It's the whole body of the church. But unlike a physical doctor trying to help me with my knees, we need the great physician to remind us that we are one body, we are one unit, and we are a people right now who are hurting. I don't know if you've looked outside, but since March, a lot has gone down. A lot of people sit, you know, having the conversations with people, we're confused, we're upset, we're sad, some are worried. I think those are all honest, honest things to say. But I fully believe that God is still in control. He's in control of this nation. He's in control of this church. It brings me comfort to realize that this may be a shock to me, but this situation is not a shock to the Almighty. Psalm 47, 8 says, God reigns over the nations. God is st still seated on his holy throne. God has this. And we just got to be patient. So, my orthopedic told me, he goes, hey, I need you to go to physical therapy. Okay. I never, well, I've been to physical therapy when I was real little, but didn't really remember much of it. So I went to physical therapy. You know what's great about physical therapy? Nothing. <laughs> Nothing. They make you work out. I mean, it hurts. They're like, hey, you know those muscles that you don't work with? Yeah, we're going to work on those a lot. And, I, okay, a little side note, the, one of the worst things about this whole thing is you go in there, and, and, and like I said, I can't walk upstairs, and all these people are completely ripped. They're very, and I'm just like, you know, like, why can't you walk up those stairs? I'm like, I don't know. It hurts. <laughs> but what's interesting is that once I started getting in there, I talked to the physical therapist, and we kind of explained the situation. He had talked to my orthopedic, and he didn't start working on my knees. He started working on my back. He said, all right, this exercise here, it's for your back muscles. 
Okay, he, this exercise here is for your hips. We're going to work your hamstrings a little later. And then, so I'm, I'm honestly kind of confused. And the sad thing is I'm walking away from these physical therapies. My knees still hurt, but now so does my back and my legs and all the rest. For the body to heal, we need to exercise. That's what I'm learning from this. Because my body has to be strong in order to adjust for the pain going on in my knees. Okay? For the church to heal, we need to exercise. We can do that in a lot of different ways. One of the reasons why I think it's such a struggle and so why I'm so thankful that we're back for these last months is we have not been able to exercise coming together. That has been difficult. Um, but we also have the ability to pray. Pray for our congregation. Pray for our families. Pray, pray for those around us. And you know what? I will say this. I have been encouraged and I've been very reflective over these last few months about some of the things that I'm extremely grateful for. I'm extremely grateful for Ms. Porter's phone calls to just see how I'm doing. I'm extremely grateful for Ms. Pat writing letters to my kids saying, hey, we're still here for you. I'm extremely grateful for Sunday school teachers who have been checking in on their groups and letting them know that we're still a family. I'm extremely grateful for moments like birthdays and getting Linda Maxwell's wonderful cakes. I'm extremely grateful for Christmas time and always getting to receive some wonderful, tasty foods, not from everyone, but the ones that always stick to mind are, are, are Lisa's sausage balls. I'm extremely grateful for y'all's prayers for me. That's exercise. We have that. We have the ability just to call and check up on people. And I'm going to be honest, it's hard for me sometimes. You know, I get so caught up in life, I'm busy. You know, that's a, a horrible excuse, right? Um, there used to be an old saying, I don't remember who said it, so I'm not going to butcher that, but it said, if Satan can't make you sin, he'll make you busy. But one of the interesting things about this whole ordeal, we've slowed down quite a bit. And it's helped us reflect, I think, to really understand and be grateful for the things God has given us. One thing that I was, I've been very grateful for this time is the idea that I get to sit down and have dinner with my kids. You know, things just slowed down a little bit. And I get to spend time with my family. You know, I don't know if there will ever be a time in history for me where I get essentially four months to come home to my kids every day. I'm kind of grateful for that. Prayer. Praying for one another. In Romans it says, in the same way the Spirit helps us in our weakness. We do not know what we ought to pray for, but the Spirit himself intercedes for us. One of the things that I have learned is there's a lot of times I don't know what to pray for. But I pray anyway. Because I recognize that the Spirit intercedes for us. God is on our side. A lot of times we just need to go to God to just can make that connection. I think for me, prayer, prayer is difficult for me, okay? Not just because I'm busy, because I'm ADD, okay? I don't know if y'all figured that out over 10 years, I think. Surprise. Um, to be still 
focus. Just have a moment with God. Be honest. Be raw. I think that's a good word. One of my favorite things from like Jewish customs and stuff is this idea that prayer is not necessarily just this conversation. It's almost like wrestling. You wrestle with God, right? You struggle with him. Why? Because you know there's things going on in your life that are hard and you don't get it. There are moments where you look around and you say, anything else? And God gets it. What I think is really fascinating, though, is God lets this happen. God lets that happen. He understands. I don't think he gets angry. I think he's just grateful that, he's, that we're willing to come to him and say, God, help us out here. Because God is a, our, our God is a God of compassion, a God of love, a God of mercy, and we all need that. Our church needs fellowship. Like I mentioned earlier. Now, fellowship is here. Now, if you can't make it because of things going on, I understand. It's not something that I sit there and say, well, everybody needs to come back. Absolutely not. I want people to come back when they are absolutely ready and feel comfortable. But I want to let the people know who are watching this video that we are praying for them and that they are still part of our family, even from afar. We can still fellowship, and we're grateful for their time. So I went to this orthopedic. He made me do things that hurt. And then the next honest question comes up through my struggle. Hey, how long is this going to take? Right? If I'm going to be going through all this pain, how long will this take? Orthopedic or looked at me and he goes, I don't know. Said, Excuse me? I said, I don't know. He goes, could be weeks, could be months. We might have to be really focusing on, on, on almost a year. He goes, I hope not. He goes, but I don't know. <laughs> then he said this. He goes, I do know one thing, though. To get better, you have to keep going. Not necessarily what I wanted to hear, but deep down inside, I knew that was the answer. We have to keep going. It's interesting. As I go through, and I've kind of been weaving my life, it's kind of, you know, looking back through these past few weeks. Some of the challenges that we have gone through as a nation, as a church, as an individual. Well, man, that's really hard. But we got through that. Previous time, you can look back on the past. We've struggled before. We'll struggle again. But through those struggles, the Bible teaches that makes you stronger. And like I said last week, one of my favorite things is that I know the end of the situation, right? I've read the back of the book. I know where this all leads. And I may have some bad knees now, but I don't think in about 100 years I'll have some bad knees. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Romans 8, 38 and 39 says this, For I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels, demons, neither present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth or anything else in creation will separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus. Amen.
God is still good. He is still intervening on our behalf. He's intervening for First Baptist Farmers Branch right now. One of the wonderful things, if I may, um, talk about is just this idea that through these last few weeks, um, getting together with the church council, seeing people who are willing to step up and say, you know what, I know it's another evening that we, we basically have to take apart from the rest of our family, but we're doing the work of the church. We're willing to take those sacrifices. God is going to keep working, and it's so cool to see so many people take heart in this church, and not just people in this church. I've had conversations with pastors, and, and they sympathize, and they understand, and they try and pass on their, their wisdom and say, you know, this is how I would see things, or this is how I would approach things, or listening to the DBA, talking to Bob Dean, who I'm excited to hear from next week, um, just coming to us and just praying for us. People around are praying for this church right now. That's powerful. People you don't know are praying for this church. I get this from my mama a lot. She always tells me, she goes, you know, I'm praying for your church. And I said, yes, mama. She goes, I'm praying for you. I said, no, mama. People are praying for you. And I want to end with this thought. The book of Philippians, Paul is writing to a church. This church, actually, um, if you go through all the text, most people would say this, I don't want to say Paul, this was Paul's favorite church, but it was the church that Paul allowed for him, um, probably the healthiest church that he ministered to in our letters. Um, he would allow them to actually help fund his ministry. All the other churches, he wouldn't allow them to do that. He's like, no. But Philippians, the book of Philippians, he, he, he allows them. And I think there was just a special place for him, for them in his heart. Uh, not because they were just different people. He goes, because they were healthy people. They really helped him in his ministry. And with that being said, this is what he says to this. Because, at the, like, again, th this is probably the best church that he's got going on. He goes, being confident in this, that he who began a good work in you will carry it on till completion, until the day of Jesus Christ. God's not finished. God's not finished with us. That's what that verse told me. God's not done with us yet. You really think about this. Paul is writing to a healthy church who is doing good work on behalf of his ministry. And he says, hey, God's not done with you yet. When will this be over? When Jesus comes back. God's still not finished with him. And God's not finished with us yet either. I fully believe that. I am so grateful that we have church. I am so grateful for you. And I pray that God does wonderful things in our lives. And we will laugh together, we'll continue to cry together, but we'll continue to live life together. And the world will see the great things God is doing in this church. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you for what you do. I thank you for your mercy, your grace, your peace. I, I thank you for family, fellowship, churches. I, I thank you for interceding on our behalf. thank you for being a good God. And I thank you for taking care of your children. Lord, we love you. We say this in your name. Amen.
Dear Heavenly Father, as we leave, let us remember to turn our eyes towards you. And all the troubles and the hardships of this world will fade away. We love you and we thank you. And we say this in your name. Amen.